Need some fast, cheap, reliable muck coins? Go to MMOXP.com and use discount code MONEYSHOT for 5% off your order. Link in the description below. Welcome back, YouTubers and Madden fans. This is Mad Money Shot. Sniff not the man. She's always got another full breakdown video for you guys. As always, I try to put out a full breakdown uh, for free at least once a month. And this month, I want to put out the Green Bay Packers. Now, the Green Bay Packers is one of the biggest books that I've made this year. To me, it's one of the best passing playbooks in the entire game. Easily a top five. I also think it's a really underrated and underutilized playbook as far as the Madden community goes. Maybe a couple years ago, this is probably one of the hottest playbooks in the game. But it's since I think it's been used a lot less. Not as far as pro players go. Pro players know how good this playbook is, especially because of the two formations that I mentioned. Uh, but ultimately, I, I highly recommend this book. So this is going to be part one. It's going to be about an hour long. Uh, like I said, this is one of the biggest books that I've made. If you want to see a part two, hit the like button. I'll put out part two tomorrow. Other than that, let's go and let's get right into the video. Next up, we got the halfback dive alert bubble. So these particular formations, they really give away the coverage. Um, I would find that to me, uh, if it's, you know, like like this is obviously because we have a cornerback on the right side. So we have a zone coverage. I'm really just going to watch how this guy gets blocked out here. You can see right here, he just gets that block and it's going to set me free outside. That was a cover too from the looks of it. And it really worked well because the block engaged right away. Um, but like I said, that's pretty much going to be my read. I, I first read if it's man or zone based off of the, the formation, you know, giving it away. And then I watch the blocking. Like I said, right there, I mean, I got sacked, but you can see that the bubble screen was wide open. You know, I might have took a little long to make my determination, but like I said, watch that coverage guy. You can see right there, if he drops back, if he does anything other than, you know, drop towards the receiver immediately, he's going to be open. So whether he gets blocked or not. And then I have the option, like I said, right here, it's a man coverage. So I can try to get it outside because essentially that's where the weakness is against man coverage. Uh, some plays are designed to run outside, which are a little bit better, but this is a good play. This might be the only option you have, so, you know, a lot of times you got to take it. And then, like I said right there, I mean, sometimes the blitz, you know, can get you before you get the ball off, but it is what it is, so don't necessarily run into the blitz. Here we got another man coverage. I'll try to take it wide, just sprint to the edge, get as much as I can, but that's going to be the read. If it's man, you're going to try to get it outside. Like I said, some plays... They have that designed, you know what I'm saying? Like that's they're, they're they're the better versions, but this is a very good version on top. You know, based off of the formation alone, it makes it a very good version. Next up, we got the halfback toss. This play here can't flip it, but it would be nice if you could. So all we're really gonna do is uh, you know motion block this guy. If it was a man coverage, you can run it as is. Uh, but in this scenario, the best way to run it will be with a motion block. I. You know, as you can see, I just make one guy miss. There wasn't too much opposition out there in the first place, but it's a good about 40 yards easy. Like I said, I mean, if it's a man coverage, you just line up and run it because there won't be any cornerbacks on that side. Uh, but the blocking, especially with the motion block done right, can be pretty good. It can be pretty solid. Can't run this play too much, though. The motion will give it away. I don't have a lot of motions in this formation. Um, but uh, but you can see, I mean, the blocking is pretty on point. Is is it's like a decent run there. Next up, we have the jet sweep. Nothing really to this play. You're just going to want to sprint to the sideline. Uh, typically, if it's a man coverage, there won't be anybody on the other side, uh, which is pretty pretty neat, pretty easy pickup. Not necessarily the most consistent play, but if you get caught, um, you're only going to take like a, a, a one yard loss or a two yard loss based off of the design. So, you know, it's something, it's a trick play to throw in every once in a while, but I can't say it's good enough to make a living off of it. You can make it a little bit better. Um, you know, you want to stay as far away from the line as possible and just run a straight sprint to the sideline. And like I said, it's a pretty good run. You can get a good 10, 12 yards. Uh, pretty easily with it, um, you know, just as long as you don't get too close to the line of scrimmage and, and uh, you know, basically trip up any any uh, defended players to, to, to tackle you. Next up, we have the PA boot. It's a pretty good play as is. You got the high-low concept with the A and the B route. Uh, the B route, the zig route, typically pull coverage down. And that'll give you the B route pretty pretty easily. Um, the B route's pretty good too. I mean, there's a lot of a lot of man coverage this year, and that'll definitely destroy man coverages quick and easy. You know what I mean? Like none of the other routes on this will really beat man coverage, except for the uh, the, the comeback route. The comeback route is um, is a really good uh, man man route as well. I mean, the comeback route, the way these three routes work off each other, it doesn't need any adjustments. They're all really uh, really uh, well spaced. 
I mean, these routes are really well spaced apart. Uh, they're all really timing based, though. I mean, with the exception of the A route. If, if the user doesn't follow the A route, that's just going to be really uh, a really easy play. Uh, it just finds space. It finds openings. But as far as the other routes, especially the um, the X route, I mean, you're definitely going to have to, to work on the timing of that. This zig route just typically gets open, whether it's man or zone. Uh, it's a really glitchy route this year. Um, but like I said, I mean, the real the real big play is definitely the, the, the comeback route there. Um, but, you know, like I said, you really have to throw it in its break. And a lot of times if those receivers are hand fighting and whatnot, a lot of times the break isn't as pronounced. But you can see how that's pretty much money every time. So pretty much all three of these routes get open. Your last, uh, your last bet to get open is going to be the comeback route, and that's just very much like, especially against man coverage, you're going to beat that every time. <laughs> Next up, we have the PA Jet Sweep. This play is good, just like this. Uh, no real adjustments needed. It's very unique. Um, you have the ability to throw a quick throw to the uh, the, the X route. If, um, <coughs> if you have a cover three, uh, but most coverages, your best bet's going to be Olsen. The animation a lot of times, though, can get you in trouble. You can't even cancel out of it, um, but it's a unique play. I mean, there's there's definitely uh, some ability there, especially with this with underneath route here, um, the B route. They don't really react to that very well. Next up, we got the PA post shot. So this can be set up to be a one-play touchdown against cover four, if you just put also here on an in route and then smart route, and that's really all you have to do. Uh, then you just have to wait uh, for the coverage to clear. If I just wait for that X route to get inside of that safety and then bomb it up, a lot of times you can get past. Now, I didn't get quite the window I wanted to. I probably shouldn't have rolled to the left like I did. I typically want to either stay in the center of the pocket or roll in the direction of the throw, but a lot of times the defensive ends won't allow you to do that. So like I said, right here, if I rolled out, you can see, I mean, I just get, you know, I, I rolled right into the guy. So if I take my uh, my adjustment and slide right, it might be the best way to go. And I'll go ahead and I'll try to um, to get in that direction because, like I said, that to me. In fact, I mean, my best other option is to just stay in the middle of the pocket. And then you can see it's just I just find that you can shorten that throw and get a better throw if you roll out in that direction. Because ultimately, ultimately my goal is to pass lead this receiver as far away from the the, the the following safety as possible as you can see right there now i finally get that good throw you know what i'm saying non-contested past the coverage type of throw so really it's all about timing it's all about the throw um you just have to wait for this guy like i said you just have to wait for him to get inside of this safety once he gets inside that safety you're throwing the ball because now i'm just past leading away he's already passed this guy he's going to beat him you know what i'm saying he's paying attention more to the guy in front of him and now if I go back to the quarterback, like I said, I'm already I'm already winding up. The second I see him get inside of that safety, once he crosses that safety, load it up and throw it bullet pass to the right as far as possible. Next up, we got the stretch alert bubble. This is another play where essentially, you know, you know what you're looking at because of the formation. So I have a zone here because I have a cornerback on the right side. So I'm pretty much just going to be going to the B route. As you can see right there, I mean, the, the way that the stretch sets up, it sucks in the linebackers even all the way across on the left side. So it's going to get this bubble screen open pretty easily. Um, other than that, I mean, there's really no other option. You know, like I said right there, he's following the play away to the point where I could just come across. And it's just going to be an easy play every time. If I come out and there is no cornerback over there, I know exactly where I'm going with the ball. Here he actually reacted to it really well, but you can see it doesn't really matter. I'm still getting the edge because he did slide inside. So the longer I hold that, the better in regards to that throw. But like I said, sometimes they'll react to it. You know what I mean? Like it's still the best play considering. Even if they react to it like they did there. I'm waiting to get a man coverage. Like I said right there, you see the blocking sets up great. I'm, you know, I'm just basically catching this for an easy 10 to 15 yard catch and run every time. I want to get a run play out of this though. If you come to the line and there's no cornerback on the right side, you're going to take the stretch. Uh, but you can see, I mean, it's a good stretch run. Like, even there, that wasn't necessarily the best call. But sometimes you'll have to run regardless. You're really reading, if it's man or zone when you come to the line, then you're reading what that linebacker or safety or whoever does out, out in front of this uh, bubble screen receiver. If he goes inside like that and chases the run, it's going to be open pretty much every time. I guess I'm not getting any man coverages, <laughs> which is like, that's... That, I want to show off the run play at least one time. Uh, but you can see the bubble screen is really the big play. But if it is a man, you'll get big runs as well. 
So I don't know what's going on here, but whatever. So like right here, like there we got the lineman. The lineman kicked all the way out and just even helped even more with the blocking. So I guess we're not going to get a man look today. But like I said, if you do get a man coverage, obviously even there it wasn't a man coverage. But you can see the stretch run is still going to be really successful as well. So good big plays to both sides of the field. Next up, we got the halfback toss. If I could toss this play, I mean, if I could flip this play based off the fact that that extra defender just dropped down, I would, but you can't. So, I mean, toss plays are kind of cheesy, so they kind of limit them sometimes. And you can see how that shuts it down. But typically, um, just running this play stock uh, is a pretty good setup. You can see, I mean, speed to the edge, you know, is all you really need. And a lead back, you make a dude missing, and you're, you're taking a toss play to the house. And that's why, like I said, they, they limit the amount of adjustments you can make on a lot of toss plays. Um, but, you know, you can run it as is. You don't have to make any motions, but motioning out that tight end a lot of times can help. Next up, we got the fullback dive. Like I said, you're going to want to, you know, have a good power back, maybe with some speed. And just hand it to him inside at the fullback position. You don't want to necessarily have your fullback here, um, but you definitely want to have, you know, somebody that's a, a good running back. And you can see you can get some big lanes. It's a quick play too. It's like an instant play right up the gut. Um, and it's just, you know, nine times out of ten, if you need a couple yards, you'll get it with this play. Next up, we got the PA boot flow. This play right here. Make sure you want a, a speedy back right here at your your run back spot. Motion him over to the left. And a lot of times he'll just get forgotten in coverage. Like I said, if he's athletic, you can turn up the field. You can turn that into a nice five to ten yard gain every time. These um, these tight ends A and B, a lot of times uh, those are also really good options. Um, you know, they're really playing off the fullback. I mean, that's the whole idea. Your your A and B tight end options are pretty good as well. Um, the comeback's one of the best routes on this play. I mean, that's one. Um, but like I said, when you got your dude wide open like that, it's <laughs> it's kind of hard not to hit the fullback when he's so wide open. That's that's the idea behind the play. Just a simple motion, and he just gets forgotten by a lot of coverages. Uh, but when he, if, if they do sit on that, a lot of times the uh, the comeback route. I mean, the comeback route is so money no matter what. Whether it's man zone, whatever, it's going to be open. The comeback route's so cheese. The comeback route's all about timing. You got to hit him in his break. Um, and a lot of times it's just, if you deliver that ball on the money, it just doesn't really matter what the defense is. You can see right there, I mean, it was like double coverage, and it just didn't matter because it's just such a cheesy play. Um, but, you know, like I said, three of these routes are really good. Obviously, the A route is really good. Um, as you can see right here, he's beaten through, but I get sacked because I don't know what happened with the animation there. But, but you can see the A route was wide open. <coughs> The B route's really good. Um, you know, that's obviously when you got the, the, the A route in front of it pulling coverage. Uh, a lot of times the B route's going to be right there uh, trailing with no coverage. You know what I mean? You can only have so many guys in the middle. And I, I think I'm doing that to myself because I'm, I'm, I'm running, I'm sprinting out a little bit, uh, which is why I'm getting sacked. <coughs> but you can see the A route, every time I'm getting sacked, he's, he's, been, he's been open. <coughs> So let's go ahead and let's do this again. Because I haven't actually hit the A route. I mean, I'm talking about him. <laughs> but so here we go. I don't know what that coverage was, but we're going to hit that comeback. Pretty much every time, that's your fail safe is your comeback route. I think the uh, RV route was open too, but I saw the, the, the comeback route just running wide open over there. So, got to go there. Like I said, I'm trying to hit this A route. I haven't hit this A route yet. There we go. Like I said, he basically, if he's not open towards the center... If the A route doesn't get open at the center of the field, you might as well just wait till, till um, you might as well just hit the X route because at that point they're basically in the same spot. <laughs> so, so it's you know it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Just hit the X route at that point. If the if the um, if the A route doesn't or the B route don't get open right away, then you just basically forget about them because the comeback route is basically going to be anyway. So by the time they get across the field, the comeback route's a better option. Next up, we got the post shot. Go ahead and let's pick that. All we're going to do is going to motion in more here. And a lot of times he'll get open right away inside, um, you know, certain coverages. I, I was hoping to get for him to slant inside there through a little bit earlier, but he still got open. Crossing tight ends are going to get open against a lot of things. Uh, Thomas is probably going to be your best man beater to check down. Uh, but, you know, it's ultimately, you know, that, that, that drag route pulls down a lot of coverages that will get uh, Olsen open. 
Um, so you really have those two guys, and then your check downs. You know, all three of these routes should get open every time. Like I said, I'm trying to get that that X route a little bit more. You can see, I mean, they just don't know, you know, who to go to. They, these coverage linebackers, they they go in between um, the high and the low tight ends. Uh, so you basically just got to pick whichever one they don't. It's that simple, man. Man, the longer he was in coverage, the worse it got. Let's go and let's do this again. Like I said, a lot of times, this guy typically, when motioned in, will get a free release, which means he'll get open pretty much, you know, <laughs> nine times out of ten because he's got that inside release from the from the cornerback. One more time. So that inside release is, is important. It's a big one. It's a big one. <laughs> As you see right there, it's a big one. Next up, we got the Stretch Alert X Lookie. It's just a good play with the option to throw back. Um, if you see, you know, there's a certain coverage advantage, like there's not a defender in the area. Um, and in that scenario, you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's, you can, you can get pretty good, you know, sometimes you can get single coverage out there and make a really big play out of it. But you really want to pre-diagnose if that's a good idea. If you see right there, I mean, the linebacker actually dropped and I still snuck it past. So it's really hard to miss on either side. Next up, we got the fullback belly. Make sure you got a, a good running back here in the fullback spot. Um, whoever you have best, I'm going to say for me, is probably going to be Cameron R.S. Payne. This player right here has a fake motion. It's going to mirror some other plays from this formation. Um, but it's just, you know, typically you're just trying to get the user middle linebacker out of the middle um, by the motion. And then you can hit him with this fullback dive right up the middle. Um, which, you know, it's, it's a good play. Uh, I'm not going to act like it's, it's the best play ever, but if you have a running back there, you can see how successful it can be. It basically is like an inside zone at that point. A lot of times the, the lane won't necessarily be straight ahead. It'll be kind of off to the angle, like right here. But you can see it's a pretty successful play. I mean, consistent too, 20 yards a pop. Just as long as you don't got any crazy blitzes coming. Sometimes you got to take it all the way outside. Like I'm being chased. I'll take it though, five yards. Easy, easy, easy. So let's go ahead and let's do it one more time. Like I said, very consistent. Got that alley pretty much every time. I mean, that's just super money. This read is probably outside in. You're probably going to start outside. If it's not there, work your way inside. Like I said, if I had... Uh, <laughs> If I had McCaffrey running this, probably even dirtier. But here we go. Like I said, I'm, that's that's typically where I'm going, right there. You know what I'm, saying? I'm, I'm, I'm shooting that across, just just like an inside zone. It's essentially an inside zone. Let's go ahead and let's go to the replay real quick, just to show the lane. Like I said, I'm just I'm just shooting this inside, and that's that's the angle I want to take the whole way across the field, essentially. Let's go ahead and let's do that one more time. Like I said, that's always there. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I, I know. Like I said, I, I really should have put Christian McCaffrey there, but it doesn't matter. I'm getting 20 a pop. Easy. Easy 20 yards of carry. There's also a screenplay that mirrors the same motion. We'll go ahead and we'll pick that. Basically, that's for McCaffrey. Like you said, you're going to you're gonna want to hit McCaffrey for a catch and run pretty much every time um, he can be open right at the sideline. You're going to want to run it like that because McCaffrey's route really needs space to operate. You know what I mean? Like his, his catch and run, if you run it towards the middle, you might run out of bounds. So right there, we get a little turn up. You know what I'm saying? I accidentally, I accidentally turned inside way too much, but really a timing throw. I mean, this is not necessarily the best design play that EA has ever done, and the fullback just doesn't seem to get open at all. But he's definitely there. Except we got the motion spot. I would like to set this up pretty quickly. Just chuck it out to McCaffrey so he can catch and run because he stops pretty quickly on the formation. So to me it's best, you know, just, just basically chuck it, it, out, it out, out there because I don't want him to stop. He just lost all his momentum. I didn't get it out quick enough. You can actually hit the button too quick and then it won't even respond. Let's go ahead and let's do this again. Like I said, I'm just going to try to throw it out quick so he can catch that in his pocket there and turn on feel for as much as he can get. He only got about five yards there, but he can get more, five, ten, fifteen. 
Next up, out of the pistol strong slot open, we have the PA slide. All right, this play right here, you don't really need any adjustments. It's um, it's just a it's a well designed play. If you have any man coverages, you're gonna want to hit more. I messed up on the catch there. I guess I was hitting the button too much. But that's pretty much your only man beater. Other than that, I mean, you have a lot of crossing routes to hit for zone. Um, that's essentially going to be the play. You're just kind of working your way from front to back. But you're just going to work your way front to back. And like I said, I mean, this 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 uh, comeback route's good. I mean, even against zone, the guy was there, but it didn't matter because the comeback route's really the money the money route here. Because I'm gonna do it again. <laughs> you know what I mean? I want to keep in the comeback route. But it's just the most consistent out of all the routes. Let's go ahead. Let's try to hit some of these two upper routes here. Like I said, that RB route a lot of times can get open under the coverage for a catch and run. Uh, and cover threes especially, but it didn't necessarily there. Next up, we got the bench pivot. So this play right here, I mean, I don't really have to make any adjustments. I like the X route. That's going to be my first read. Uh, it's just a unique looking uh, read structure. with um, with. It's basically just a cover two concept, but you can tell it looks a little bit different. You can put the um, the RB route on a streak, and it'll help pull those coverages. But ultimately, I'm just going, you know, like I said, it's a cover two play. You know, I mean, you got your you got Olsen, who's your, who's your deep cover two play, and then you got your out route, which is your cover three play. Next up, we got the corner strike. So all I'm gonna do is put Hogan on a streak, and then I got my high low underneath. Hogan just pulls back if it's a cover three or a cover, you know, cover three or cover two or man, it's gonna be same pretty much every time. Cover three, it's gonna be the flat route. So a real easy play. Like I said, the uh, the RB route just pulled back for cover three, and then I didn't hold it. I can all but block the running back. He's not really going to do much for me because I'm splitting the field in half and just kind of throwing to what's open over here. But you can see that flat route is going to be a good catch and run. So if it's there, take it. Next up, we got the mesh. Your RB route really is just to pull uh, coverage back. Although right there, they just let game a free release and a cover three. So it's it's something that you could see. But ultimately, he's just pulling coverage back, and then you're hitting the A and the B if it's a man, like right here. So, you know, that's pretty much your reads. A and B, or A and the uh, B route are pretty much, you know, the entire play. And then your X routes are check down. You can also block the running back if you, you know, you don't really need him. Next up, we got the verticals. Here, I'm going to put X on a drag, motion out this receiver, and that's it. That's all I gotta do. The B route will get open underneath coverages a lot of times, really quick and easy. Your drag is gonna be the check down. It'll come open in this area after all the after all the um, the zones are vacated. And then you can see if you have a cover one man or cover zero, you can have a big play up the sideline to the uh, the wheel route. That's gonna be your best man beater as well as the uh, the drag. So here we go. I can tell I'm gonna have RB. Like I said, there's too much there for, for, you know, those two routes are too close together for the, the defender to choose. So whichever defender that the the, the, um, the user defender chooses, you pretty much hit the other one inside. One of those should be open pretty much every time. So like I said, right here, just waiting for him to clear. Then you have a real easy shot over the middle. Next up, we got the Z spot. I'm just going to put the B route on a streak, and then I'm reading A, which is open right away here. Um, if he's open, I'm going to take him. If he's not, the B route will be open over the top of him. Not the B route. I mean the RB route. But either way, like I said, if it's there, you know, like I said, there, he's not, so i got to hold it. It was a bad throw. It's typically going to be a little bit further outside, so I tried. I meant to say the RB route. We're just playing the A versus the RB route. So like I said, right here, it's a blitz. You know, we're just going to take what we can get. And if it's not him, he's going to be the RB route. RB route will be better against man and cover two. Although that's a cover three, but just the way that it, it worked out, you know, with the spacing, it was it was perfect. So made that play. And then obviously the uh, the check down or the... Uh... Next up out of the shotgun doubles halfback week, we have the PA jailbreak screen. The jailbreak screenplays are good. You get a much better blocking, whether it's with the quarterback or with the receiver. 
So to me, you know, it's a good, it's a much better screenplay to run than the running back. I feel like a lot of times the running back just leaves you high and dry. Next up, we got the halfback angle. It's going to be a cover four, one play touchdown. So this X route is going to be a home run. So I'm going to put the A route on in route, then smart route it. Put the B on the drag. Just just need to get him out of there. I don't want him doing what he's doing. Um, and this is going to be the best the best option. So like I said, once I get that guy to a certain point, he's going to be a home run. Chris Hogan's not very fast, but you can see he gets past the coverage. If I have my speed guy there. So here, you're just kind of watching this route. Once he gets inside of this safety, I mean, if he's even, he's leaving. That's the, the saying. He's past that other safety. So all you have to do is throw. I mean, the guy even throws his hands up. Nice move. So all you have to do is pass lead and bullet. Uh, away and then you know run to the ball so as far as the quarterback I mean I just want to get close to the line of scrimmage because I don't think I necessarily not every QB has a 50 yard arm so I just like to move up as close as possible whether it means rolling out or whatever but you know that doesn't really matter you just want to make sure it's that your QB's got this got the throwing power next up we got the four verticals just, uh, just put the Y, I mean, to me, just put the Y route on, on. You can leave it as is. The drag's okay, but I like putting the Y on a slant. It's a little bit more aggressive. Um, like I said, ultimately, you're crossing those routes for the user. And then if you have a cover three, this guy's really good outside. You could also put the um, the X route on a comeback. In this case, it's a man coverage. Although the slant's going to do okay against man coverage. Ultimately, um, you know, the comeback's going to be better if you catch a man coverage. But um, there I forgot to do it, and you can see, like I, said, like I said, the slant's still really good. Comes open underneath all the coverages. But those are really your three options. I should say four options. Okay. Cover, th I mean, the, the, the running backs, all, uh, the RBs, only for cover three. But you have, you know, three options aside from this and every other coverage. So, comeback route the X for man, slant or drag for man, and uh, A, you know, A and A and the Y route. You know, they're they're both meant to uh, split the user, and then I get a bad throw. <laughs> but then the, and the RB... What is what is so, come back the X, slant the Y. Those are both good man beaters, and then Olsen, y, Olsen versus Y against the, cover, against the user, and then RB for cover three. Next up, we got the QB draw. What is, what this play right here, I mean, you still have a run play in your arsenal. I wouldn't recommend doing it very often, but if you're coming out in a lot of empty packages, you want to keep your opponent honest so they can't come out in uh, too big of uh, too big of uh, pass defensive sets with just three down linemen and stuff like that. You could always hit them with a QB draw. Next up, we got the halfback slip screen. Just motion out the uh, the running back to the line. He'll get open under a lot of zones quicker that way. Um, and if that's not there, if it's a, if it's a Hard flat, obviously you got the screen on the other side, but it's a good misdirection. Your opponent will have to chase one. And then the other one typically is open. So I said here, this looks more like a something that'll allow underneath coverage. I don't have to I'm not forced to do the uh, the, the, the screenplay. I have another option which is nice. Screenplays can be good from time to time, but they can also get you in trouble if they're the only option. So I like to have something that gives me another option, which is basically this play right here. So you're really going left or right. If this not, if this isn't open, it's typically got to be the screenplay. Screenplays can get blown up, but they won't necessarily get picked off if the user starts covering this side. And you got to go to the other side because, like I said, I mean, you can take a loss on a bad screenplay, but you ain't gonna, typically ain't going to get picked off by the computer on a screenplay. Except we got the motion spot. Another player, we're really just trying to get it out to the Y route, but there's some other, you know, a little bit better routes. I mean, right there, I mean, they're just sending some serious blitzes but you know all these plays are really are really gonna be best throwing it out to that type of receiver right there you can put the B on a drag or on a streak to try to help get the Y route or the um, the A route open I say right there you can even like you know the covers drop back I can just wait just to make my determination but ultimately it's like a cover two like a regular cover two play or a cover three play so I'm just kind of I don't have to dig it out right away. This particular play, I can wait to find out if Hogan's going to get open or not, which sometimes he will, sometimes he won't. Next, we, next up, we got the RPO zone bubble. So once again, I mean, you're just kind of chucking it out, catching and flipping it out to this guy. 
pretty much it. Nothing really else to display. I mean, you have um, a route on the other side. It's like an option route. But if you're calling this play, it's really just to do this. Just to hit this guy and catch and turn it up the field quick. If the defense is sliding to it, though, hold A. And you can give it to the, give it to the running back, although right there. I mean, I had a lane, but he caught me. I still got 10 yards falling forward, but you can see there's lanes there, too. So it's really, you know, the, the, the outside receiver really doesn't have much of an option. It's really just this guy who's a good play. You know what I'm saying you can turn up field with it. Or uh, the inside zone. Here go, here go. So here we go. Like I said, that's you get you get some lock and you're gonna be gone. Next up, we got the shakes. Sounds funny Ready? to say that. Motion out this running back again. Like I said, he'll get open a lot of times under a lot of coverages. That's pretty much the play. I mean, there's not a lot else going on here. These 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 curl routes don't really work anymore. The C routes. So it's pretty much all you got uh, is this and then the running back. Um, so, you know, like I said, this play right here is pretty much just to beat up the flats and like a cover three. Pretty much all you got. Next up, we got the motion stutter go. So the A and the B route are on some sort of weird like stop and go type of thing that, you know, it's a, it's a very unique route. I like to just take that away entirely. Put them both on streaks and you'll see that they'll get open against certain things. I also like to pass block the running back because that play action will keep me from throwing it to McCaffrey as quickly as I want to do. But if it's a cover three or it's a cover, oh, I forgot to block the play, block the run. If it's a cover um, three, you can see right there, he'll get open in the cover three seam right away. You have to block that running back though, because that will prevent success in the uh, scenario of a, of a quick throw to the uh, to the Y route. So right there, like I said, you, you'll have that. You know, what I mean, that'll that'll be open a lot of times. I don't even think that was a cover three, but he's still open. So this is not a one-trick pony to the you know to the running back like some of the plays are. I said right there. I mean, I, t I tried to throw it out earlier, but it just got stuck in the quarterback's hand. Obviously, this play is going to be best run from the sideline. And you have the option. I would say just putting, um, just putting the uh, the X route on a slant would probably be a better option than what he's running right now. I said right there. Like if they don't, you know, if they if they drop back in any way, you can just steal that right away for a catch and run. That obviously isn't as big of a play as it is in the formation where it's just all blocking, obviously. But you have that. And like I said, the cover two, this outside guy right here is going to beat cover two up. So A's cover three, B's cover two, and that's pretty much it. You also, like I said, you have the, the option to throw the running back right away. Just get as much as you can, catch and run. You know what I mean? That's that's typically how I would do it. You can always drag the A or the X route, or you can slant him. Because the route he's running is really not that great, so I think I'd rather him on a slant. Because the user's going to leave the middle of the field a lot. You can see right there, I mean, I had to get a possession catch. But a lot of times that'll be open because of the uh, the motion of the running back. They'll chase that and they'll lead in the center of the field. The user will anyway. Next up, we got the motion Y cross. All I'm going to do here is put the B on a drag. Um, that'll give you a good high-low with the, uh, with the um, you know, the, those are basically going to be your check downs that work against zone a lot of times. Um, but really, it's you know, this whole formation is really about the A route first. Uh, but since, you know, a lot of times the goal is to move the user middle linebacker out of the center and chase that, you'll see how these uh, receivers will come open over the middle. So, like I said, just drag the A route, pull coverage down, and, uh, you know, the Y route, here's a blitz. I'm going to hit that Y route. Looks like it was a man blitz, and then you can see you're going to get a big play going the opposite way. So the running back's still your first read, but the other reads are pretty good, too. The streak isn't doing too much. You can put him on a uh, comeback route just to give him a good uh, man beater look. Other than that, he's just pulling coverage. Like I said right here, I mean, I'll just, you know, that was, that was, I probably should have took the comeback route. You could also put the X route on a comeback because ultimately he's going to work off of the, off of the drag the same way and be a good, a good man beater option. So you really have a couple of different options there. And like I said, the A route and the B route over the middle are pretty much going to be the biggest part of the play. Next up, we got the motion Y cross. All I'm going to do here is put the B on a drag. Uh, that'll give you a good high low with the uh, with the um, you know the, those are basically going to be your check downs that work against zone a lot of times, um, but really it's you know, this whole formation is really about the A route first. Uh, but since you know a lot of times the goal is to move the user middle linebacker out of the center and chase that, you'll see how these uh, receivers will come open over the middle. So like I said, just drag the A route, pull coverage down, 
And, uh, you know, the Y route, here's a blitz. I'm going to go ahead and hit that Y route. Looks like it was a man blitz, and then you can see you're going to get a big play going the opposite way. So the running back's still your first read, but the other reads are pretty good, too. The streak isn't doing too much. You can put him on a uh, comeback route just to give him a good uh, man beater look. Other than that, he's just pulling coverage. Like I said right here, I mean, I'll just, you know, that was, that was, I probably should have took the comeback route. You could also put the X route on a comeback because ultimately he's going to work off of the, off of the drag the same way and be a good, a good man beater option. So you really have a couple of different options there. And like I said, the A route and the B route over the middle are pretty much going to be the biggest part of the play. Next up, we got the bench. This is a good play for cover two, all out blitzes, man. Um, you know, just about any coverage, really. I mean, th these outside routes a lot of times can get outside of cover fours and three. There's no real adjustments needed. I mean, this, these underneath routes get open under cover two, under cover three, really well as well. They beat man also. I mean, it's just this play is just really, really money this year. And like I said, there's a man coverage. Like I said, they're send, sending zero blitzes. I'll pull this play out and I'll pretty much hit a home run just about every time. The only thing that can really prevent this play from having success is if they don't get a free release. A lot of times that can mess up uh, mess up the route and then they don't get that they don't get that edge the way that they are here. So next up out of the shotgun type, we got the buck seams. Let's play right here. If it's a cover three, motion this guy out and I find it gets open under the coverage quite a bit. Even if it's not cover three, I find like it's gonna be a big play and then this guy over here I mean I don't even know what coverage that was but he just beat it outside so I don't know what that was so like I said we can just do that all game really like I said one more time I got that Y route he's just way outside I mean the throw was bad but he's just getting outside no matter what there we go with the cover three it should be interesting should be pretty much the same result like I said that Y route so he's he's beating outside. He got a little beat. He got a little bumped up a little bit out there though. Regardless of the coverage. So here we go. Cover three. Like I said, I'll motion this guy out. Try to get that wire out going. Although it might not be a cover three. It might be a man. So here we go. We're gonna go the other way. With a, with a really easy touchdown. Because like I said, that's gonna beat man up the field as well. So I'm gonna motion that guy out again. Like I said, it looks like we got that B route over there. I think that was a cover two. So you don't even have to motion him over. I'm going to go ahead and check the replay on that. I said, yeah, that's definitely, definitely a cover two. That's why I sat on it. So like I said, you don't really have to worry about who you motion. Pretty much doesn't change the results. So like I said, right side, right here, it gets behind it again. This play is a total glitch. Let's go ahead and do that again. But it's pretty obvious if it's cover two where we're going there that was a cover three and it just it just got passed i mean it's just if it's man coverage you really want to motion this side out because the y route's going to beat the man coverage better or best i said like you see right there i mean he's beating that man coverage he didn't catch it <laughs> he didn't catch it for some reason but if it's man that's who you want if it's cover two you want to motion out the b route I don't think it ultimately matters, to be honest with you. Like I say, he's going to get past that. The guys aren't catching the damn ball for some reason, but they're getting past. All speed, no hands. So, so like I said, here we go once again. Cover two. He's going to beat that outside. Caught it that time. Nice acrobatic catch. You can go up the sideline with that too against cover two. And even the A route inside has a shot. And it caught so I'm going to make it out of this, and I'm going to start off with the mesh spot. I'll make that the first play, but we'll pick that. We'll go random 3-4. So a couple different things you can do with this play. It's not a bad play as is. Um, just putting, you know, Williams here on a streak a lot of times will help get the RB route open underneath. Um, ultimately, if it's a man coverage, though, I mean, I got, uh, I got Brown out here. Um, you know, that's a good man beater. The drags are good man beaters. Um, but ultimately, if, I, if I'm trying to make this variation work at its best, it's going to be um, to get, uh, I mean, this is obviously going to be one of the most consistent routes, but I'm trying to get the running back open. So in cover three and cover four, you know, if it's a cover three or cover four, I can still hit this this R route, this RB route, as you can see right there. It's a good check down if they, if they drop back. I wish I could motion them out like I used to, but that's not really an option anymore. Another option um, is I can make this into a bunch by just motioning over this tight end here. 
And I, I think putting him on a streak and then putting the X route either on a, a flat or an out route is going to work best. And now I have all my, pretty much all three of my reads um, over on the right side there, or the left side there. It makes it a little bit easier um, to, to do. Now I can just drag Williams just to kind of create uh, a, another good check down. But I'm ultimately reading, uh, you know, low to high here. Here's another man coverage. I'm reading front to back. I'm reading the, uh, the square out to the, uh, the post. And that's pretty much the play. Walter here, I mean, I can just, you know, or, uh, was it Waller? I can just streak him. And if it's a cover three, and sometimes cover two, he'll get open like right up the middle. Um, you know, but he, ultimately his job is to pull coverage anyway. And you can see, like, I have a cover two play and a cover three play on the outside. That's a cover two play right there. Although I think that might have been a cover three. Here we got a cover three. So like I said, the streak will come into play. If it's a cover three, I would say put X on a flat beater like that. And then, like I said, Williams doing what he's doing is a pretty good check down. But if I have it like this, which like I said, that's what I think it is. Um, a lot of times he'll just get open in the flats really quick. That was actually pretty decent coverage though by the linebacker. But, uh, but like I said, there's really two different ways. The, the, the wheel route not motioning out is somewhat of an issue um, that, you know, it just doesn't really get open like it used to because of that. So like I said, I'm pretty much just trying to work the bunch side for the most part now. And when I say like I used to, I mean, you know, it just doesn't... It, 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 this is a new formation, but I'm saying I've done similar stuff with this. Like right here, now we can get the RB route open. I wish he didn't turn up either. You know what I mean? Like, he turns up and gets into trouble. You almost have to get it out quicker. So if you get... You know, if you get a, if you get a cover three, you almost want to get it out really fast. I said right here, there's a corner blitz almost. You know what I mean? Like, it's still, it's still in play and still makes a big play and still my first read for the most part instead of, instead of running back. I said just cover three, cover four. He doesn't quite burst out of it like he, he might have in the past two. So let's say we've got a man coverage here. I, said, I think that's, I think I got a linebacker on him. <laughs> so that's going to be a win, obviously, get the, get that type of matchup. I wish I could say motioning over the receiver worked the same way, but you can't motion over B. I mean, you can motion him over, but he doesn't make the same type of play. Like I said, I, I like that flat beater. You know what I'm saying? It's not a huge play, but a lot of times you can catch and run that. And I think I got Montez Sweat uh, covering him, so that's part of the issue. I mean, he's no joke as far as speed. He's like a 91 speed, so he's getting out there a little bit quicker than most people's will. Like I said, right here. You can see, by the way, he sits down on that route the bat. I mean, Montez Sweat or whoever that is. He's doing a pretty good job of keeping up even with Brown. If it's a cover three, I'm definitely trying to hit these flat beaters first. Whether it's, um, you know, the, the X route, the RB route. Uh, Waller, like I said, he's good against cover three, but he doesn't quite get the separation um, as, as he typically might against, um, you know, because of the bunch. But, uh, but it's a good play. And ultimately, if I want to, I can just leave the A route where he's at. And it'll have that same effect up cover three. Like I said, we're just trying to get in that seam. So he actually works a little better up the seam uh, without that motion. So if it's a cover three, I would say you got your cover two side and then streak Waller so that you at least have a cover three option. Like I said, though, that's 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 kind of it kind of works against the. Um... So against cover three, I mean, you could streak him, put B on a drag. And then uh, do it like this. So this would be a good look. I mean, even without a cover three, like this isn't a cover three. There's that man beating. You know, I mean, I'm sorry, that man beating that uh, that flat beating route right there. As I didn't really recognize it quickly. So like I said, do it just like that. I said we get that X in flats. That's what I'm talking about right there. Like I said, he's not quite getting the acceleration that I'm used to. I don't know why, because he is a good athlete. So let's just put it like that. Do the drag. Like I said, if that's right there, I'm gonna take it. If I got an athlete, I can make a dude miss, and then I'm making a big catch and run. So that's really what I was expecting right there. So flat him. I'm not going to make the motion. I like, I like the motion, but I can leave him like this. It, it won't give away where the play's going, too. You know what I mean? Like, there's an all-out blitz. Uh, but, you know, without the motion, you obviously have something to do with the... Uh, you know, you can just come to the line, fire it off. Like I said, a lot of people pay attention to those motions and they know that that means where the play is going so without the motion you, you have a much bigger element of surprise next up we got the halfback quick face just motion over one of these either the receiver or the tight end it doesn't matter but the tight end won't pull an extra defender over in man coverage and that just kind of creates a, a bunch a little bit of a, a, a better blocking setup 
you know, in a scenario. I mean, obviously here we got a safety dropping in the box, so that might make things a little bit more difficult because he's coming. But uh, obviously, like I said, blocking just holds up. I just get outside of it. Here's another safety blitz. Like I said, I should be able to get outside of it though. So it shouldn't shouldn't matter. Like I said, he gets inside and then I, I I get outside of it, but not as much, not as much success as the previous play. But a good inside, a good run. Next up, we got the Z spot smash. Just streak the B route. You can't motion out the receiver, but he'll still get open underneath the coverage for a catch and run from time to time. Also, I like to put the X on a drag. As you can see right here, I mean, he's getting, he's going to get outside of that. It was just a, an all-out blitz. He didn't quite get the acceleration I want, though. I usually get a little bit better up the field. So, flat route, streak. Like I said, I'm pretty much looking for the running back, though. That's pretty much the play. Next up, we got the mesh spot. Just going to put B on a streak, motion over the receiver. You got a really good high low on the opposite side with more and uh, the in the drag route too but ultimately like i said split the field in half uh, if it's a cover three mccaffrey get outside of it for a good catch and run so one side's cover three the other side's cover two obviously this is not a cover two with the safety being down like that it was a man coverage uh, you know so I, I, once again i mean mccaffrey's going to be good against that too but typically deep I don't know if I'm going to get a cover two here. They, they seem to be just sending blitzes out of man. So, I mean, that's obviously, it's an instant open route. So, you know, you're going you're to win that all day. So here we got a cover two. I could always put um, Y on a, on a streak too, just to kind of pull back coverage for the, for the, for the big throw, which is going to be the X route anyway. As you can see right there, I mean, the, the safety is even further outside. So really good cover two play. Next up, we have the Saints spot. All I want to all I want to do is put B on a streak, put X on a flat, and uh, I don't know what happened in here. And that's pretty much it. Just split the field in half pre-snap. You don't want to be trying to read both halves of the field. Um, if it's a man coverage, obviously this uh, the receiver is going to be better to get open in the tight end, so that'd be the side that I would go to. Uh, but if it's a cover two or cover three, it's the same concept on both sides. Well, that looked like it was a. I'm not sure if that was a man as well, but McCaffrey got outside of it. But like I said, if it's a cover three or cover two, you just have the same high-low route concept. Uh, where you're going to take low. If it's uh, cover three and if it's going to be high, it's going to be a cover two. Next up, we got the Y out. All we're going to do is streak the A route, block and running back. That's it. we got to check down with the drag coming across. And then obviously the cover three play is right here coming open over the middle. By putting Hogan on one of these. That'll give you options. But ultimately, if I'm calling this play, it's to hit a home run. And I didn't wait long enough. you got to wait till it gets a little bit further across that safety. The check and release is the check down as well, but I don't want to deal with that. So, like I said, buying time is probably the uh, only real challenge to a play like this. Next up, we got the dagger. Just put the A on a uh, streak. Put the Y on a on a drag and that's pretty much your play right there just wait for this B route to get open outside you know he'll, he can get some big catch and runs I don't know that was a bad throw though here we got a double safety blitz I don't really think this play has too much of a great man beater option I would say if anything put the um, put the uh, the X route on a comeback route so you have that option so now he's now he's a good check down just put him on that comeback route He's, uh, he's going to, like I said, if it's a man, you know, he'll come back to that. That was actually bad timing by me, but it still worked out. Because ultimately, these crossing routes don't really beat man too well anymore. Except here we go, we got that, you know, just hit that comeback route. That wasn't, because of how close I am to the sideline, it's not even a really good comeback route. It's more like a, like a hangman route, which is not, not that effective. <laughs> so... But ultimately, like I said, against zones, this is the play I'm going for anyway. Uh, which can be a good catch and run type of play. Next up, we got the fade smash. If it's a cover two, 
the uh, the Y route still going to be very good. As you can see right here, I mean, it just gets outside the coverage. Um, but ultimately, I'd say it's pretty much just a cover two play at this point. So, like I said, it's pretty much just a cover two play here. It looks like we have. Uh, I'll take the come the check down the comeback route there. Next up, we got the level sale. Play doesn't work as good as it did last year, but it's still pretty much a read to the running back. It's running back tight end. Um, as you can see, I'm mean, getting a big play, but it's definitely... Ooh, I think it's fumbled. And it's definitely a really good play, though, down the field. Um, you got a, a series of check downs on the other side, and like I said, you're pretty much just going tight end, running back. Did I get back-to-back -back fumbles? What kind of bull crap is that? But uh, that's pretty much the play. And like I said, obviously, all these check downs on the right side, one of these, one of these guys will be open. <laughs> One of these guys will be open pretty much every time on the other side. You don't really have a man beater that's too great, so you could always put one in a comeback route. Um, the furthest one out on a comeback route, so you have a, a reliable man beater other than just your tight end. Your tight end would probably be your best man beater at this point. Next up, we got the PA shot cross. Just going to streak A, put Y on a drag, put X on an in route, and then smart route him. Pass block the running back. I forgot to do that, but that's pretty much all you got to do to make this a really big play. It's pretty much any zone play, any zone coverage should have a problem with that crossing route. Your opponent will most likely follow the inside cross. At that point, you'll have the high, low, and Y, and the uh, the X route coming across will really be the big play. Like I said, they'll leave the center of the field. That'll. That's why I have this guy coming in late. So at that point you'll just be you'll just be killing them with paper cuts, which um, you know is just as effective as anything else. So like I said, oh that was a great throw. <laughs> just throw that in the bleachers cam. Let's do this one more time. So you can tell that I run this play quite a bit, as you can see how quickly I can do it on sticks. Uh, so I can do this with a blindfold. So moving on. Next up we got the PA shot cross. Just gonna streak A, put Y on a drag, put X on an in route, and then smart route them. Pass block the running back. I forgot to do that, but that's pretty much all you gotta do to make this a really big play. It's pretty much any zone play, any zone coverage should have a problem with that crossing route. Your opponent will most likely follow the inside cross. At that point, you'll have the high, low, and Y, and the uh, the X route coming across will really be the big play. Like I said, they'll leave the center of the field. That'll. That's why I have this guy coming in late. So at that point you'll just be you'll just be killing them with paper cuts, which um, you know is just as effective as anything else. So like I said, oh that was a great throw. <laughs> just throw that in the bleachers cam. Let's do this one more time. So you can tell that I run this play quite a bit, as you can see how quickly I can do it on sticks. Uh, so I could do this with a blindfold. So moving on. Next up out of the gun tray white flex we have the RPO screen alert. RPO alert screen I should say. So this formation will give away man or zone which is going to basically determine what you do. If it's a man coverage Olsen's really good. If it's a zone coverage uh, the the obviously the uh, the screen's really good. You can also just kind of watch like what the uh, defenders do. Like if they if they hesitate obviously you don't want to run into that because they're going to be coming down to that. You know, if they, if the, uh, if those, those defenders in on the right side crash in towards the run play, you obviously don't want to go that way. But if they drop back, I mean, like right there, they drop back a little bit, gives me a lane. So it's really, really, that's the determination, more than anything. Like I said, we got a blitz here. We'll go ahead and get that out. I probably could have got that inside a little bit better, but I almost ran into him. Like I said, but that's, you know, I like these. These screenplays are really good this year. So your first indicator is man or zone. Your second indicator is what are those guys on the left side doing? So right there, he crashed inside. That actually, I didn't get a block. I don't know what was going on there. So your first indicator is man or zone. Your second one is what are those guys doing outside? You know I mean, like, do they crash in or do they do they stay put? If they stay put, it's a, it works pretty good either way. But if they stay put, obviously, uh, you you know you have a, it's a better option to go the other way. Next up, we got the RPO alert trap. Trap plays are pretty good. Um, this one here is extra good because you got this option to flip it out here. I mean, a lot of people are gonna gonna be shooting in towards the run. 
and then you typically want to flip it out to the pass. Like right here, I mean, I really don't have, you know, the way this blocking sets up is really nice too, but I really don't have uh, a ton of running space if I see the formation coming out looking like that. Stacked formations like this, you know what I mean? And if it's a zone coverage especially, I mean, you're going to see I have three three wide receivers, two of which are blocking against two defenders. So if it's a zone, it's going to be the read. And the formation will basically give it away. Like right here, you can tell this is a man. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna hit him with the run, get the most I can get. It's a five, six yard run easy. Next up, we got the inside zone. Just a good, consistent inside run play. Um, you can see, I mean, I had bounced it out wide there. There was nothing inside, but um, without a doubt, I mean, this is an inside-out read. You're going to read inside, nothing's there, then you're going to go outside. Uh, but one of your more consistent inside run plays from this formation. Next up out of the shotgun wide trips, we have the PA post cross shot. This plays a natural cover for beater. You don't have to do anything um, other than hold the ball. Uh, I mean, you have some pretty good checkdowns here, which is like the RB, which is the RB and the B route. Uh, but mostly, if you're going to call this play, it's going to be to go over the top. But those, like I said, those are good checkdowns. Um, other than that, like I said, I'm just holding this ball until it gets right about here, inside of that safety, and over the top of the uh, of the other <coughs> of the other safety. I can put the B route on a drag as well. Um, I think that creates a better high low. But uh, we'll just go ahead and watch the replay. I mean, like I said, it's just it's all about the throw. Once this guy gets inside of this safety here, you're just bombing it up, bullet passing and pass leading the space because he's already passed this safety. So he just has to get basically behind him over here somewhere, and that's essentially what I do. Uh, that's probably right around the time that I start. I start throwing it. Like I said, I, I got to be close enough to the line. But it's just you know, once I see him get inside that safety, you can see me letting go. It's that easy. Next up, we got the PAY out. This play here, I would just block the um, the uh, tight end. Um, I mean, it doesn't really matter, but if you got to cover zero, you're going to want the extra blocking. And then this route right here is pretty much just trying to beat up, you know, any cover one man, any cover zero. You can see that route's going to beat it, even though it's a bad throw. And then you got your drag, which is going to be the check down anyway. So, like I said, you can just be in the habit of blocking the extra defender. Like I said, I mean, that's the ball's going outside, but typically you can just take that right to the house. Next up, we got the bench. This is really a cover two concept for the most part. Um, you know, like your, your X route here, you can see how he's just, you know, beating right through the, the separation between the safety and the cornerback. Um, it can work against cover three as well, but you're going to get a little bit more coverage, um, you know, when you make, if you throw to this receiver in particular, he's going to, he's going to have it, he's going to be contested catching but it's still an option but this is the type of play you typically want to pull out when somebody's running a lot of cover twos and then obviously cover three you can see it's a much tighter window i'm not taking it to the house but you can run this uh, successfully most of the game you triangle route two i mean in a cover three he's going to be open more underneath in a cover three than he would have cover two um, but this is a good play Against man coverage, cover four, I mean cover four, he's still getting outside. Even in a cover four, you're seeing a tight throwing window to the outside, uh, but it's there. So, you know, these routes, uh, obviously he's going to get open underneath again. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's, it's a pretty good play if you can run it accurately, if you can make the accurate throws. Let's go ahead and let's do this one more time. Oh, hit the button too many times again. I've thrown picks doing that. It's annoying. Now let's do this one more time. We're gonna hit that hit that square route all the way on the outside. Like I said, it's super tight, but it's there. So you have something you can beat cover four with it. You can beat man coverage with it. You know what I'm saying? Like now we're in a man coverage. Like I said it's just obviously, you know, this is just this is one of the cheesier plays back in the day, and it's definitely pretty cheesy again. Definitely the underneath route. I'll try to hit the over the over top route now. You can see if I just, you know. <laughs> Like I said, beats just about every coverage, uh, with the exception of maybe cover two man. I don't know, but it beats just about every coverage. Next up, we got the halfback toss. This here, to me, is just kind of a more of a, more of an explosive attempt at a stretch play. Um, and you can see, I mean, that was that was a, a tremendous block. I almost took it to the house if I just had a little bit more speed. But you can see, I mean, obviously, um, you know, this is this is like taking a shot. Uh, compared to the, the stretch, it's just like, you know, the stretch is more bread and butter. This is more trying to hit a home run. Next up out of the single back ace close, we have the jet sweep. So just have your fastest guy running this. You can flip it without any animation. So if I want to go Samuel's way, 
Like there's a cover three safety to the right side, so obviously I want to go the other way. And I really messed it up. I probably could have had way more, but uh, you can see I still have a home run, even though I, I ran into my blocker to start the play. But you can see how good of a play this is. So I would only flip it if I if I see an advantage one way or the other. But just have your two fastest guys out here. Um, you, sometimes you got to take a wide. If you take a loss, you're not taking a huge loss. Obviously, taking a fumble is a big fumble, but. <laughs> So like I said, if it's cover two, it's pretty even either side. I still probably want to run it to my faster guy, uh, but you know the only time I would I would change it is maybe if it's like a cover three or I see a blitzer on the one side or whatever. You know, I'm not seeing a lot of cover threes now, but like I said, there I can see I feel like I have an extra linebacker on the left, so I'm gonna run it to run it away from that, give it to Moore. You can see it's a pretty consistent run. I mean, look at this, I'm getting huge runs here, so really good play. So I'll do this again. Like I said, cover three safety. We'll go the other way. That safety is a little bit far down the box. Let's go ahead and we'll take it outside. And if I can get that blocker, I can probably get another huge play. He doesn't have a great spin move. He's really athletic, but he doesn't have a great spin move. But still, good play. Next up, we got the PA cross. So this play here, I'm going to flip it because it, for some reason it doesn't work as well to the right side as it does to the left side. Probably because there's two cornerbacks over there or a safety in the corner. Then I'm going to put the X route on a smart route. Then I'm going to, or I'm sorry, out route, then smart route it. Motion him out. He's going to be on an island, and now he's going to stay home. Then I'm going to put the A route on a streak, pass block the running back, and now i got a one-play touchdown against cover three. So let's go ahead and let's drop back, buy some time. And like I said, you got that you got that window there. I mean, it was I had the, the throw wasn't really on point, but you can see how easy that was. <clears throat> you can't do it the other way because, the the you, like I said, you got two corners. Let's go to the replay instead of just talking over the. So that way I can focus in on the guys. You can't do it the other way because there's two guys over here. So they just they just communicate to each other a little bit differently, and that's going to make um, you know them they just react differently. So they, it doesn't work. It has to be to the side where there's only one guy in the box. So he's by himself. It, it, he'll communicate differently and he'll hold that spot down. Even though he has the same help underneath, he's just not going to communicate the same way at the same pace, and he'll stay lower in the coverage than the other corner. <coughs> So I'll go ahead and flip that again. So like I said, you just have to do it opposite of the two cornerback or the two the cornerback and the safety set. I don't even think I really need to put the tight end on a streak either, but I'm going to do that just to be safe. And then like I said, by the time he reaches across, if I pass lead that away, touchdown, baby. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like eBooks and bonus plays as well as early access to my bids and more. Link in the description below.